to sunny Queensland. Some would argue God's country. So what I've gone out in, in this episode, I've gone out and treated myself to an electric ankle hitch. Okay, now, I haven't actually mentioned anything to my wife yet about this. So we'll just be out of the secret. Adrian, where are you? Sorted. We're all good. So I'm gonna um, open this up. I'm still married, so that's all good. So I've not opened this yet. So pretty exciting. Very, very exciting. My trusty knife. Cut her open. Hopefully without cutting myself. Alright, so we're opening the box, a grand unveiling. I've got no idea what this is, but I'm sure instructions and lots of nuts and bolts. This is um, a Muir winch, by the way. It's a HR600. Take foam, that'll be handy for something, flotation maybe. And look at this. Nothing better than unwrapping something that's in plastic and brand new. Oh my god. And with you, it's basically this. So this one here takes, uh, I think it's 6mm chain. I'm pretty sure it's short link chain, but I'll double check that. Um, it's Australian made, um, which, let's face it, it's Australian made. Um, good quality. Um, I know I can get the parts locally. And I know that... So what we're doing first off is I'll be removing the anchor and clearing out the chain locker. That way it'll give us freedom of movement. Okay, so now I've taken the hatch off. Um, it's important to just have a quick look at the instruction manual. I know, guys, I hear you. It's not part of our forte. I know when myself and my wife, we do flat packs. My wife, we work as a perfect team. So she reads the instructions. And I do the screwdriver, God knows whatever else stuff, okay? But um, she's at work today, so um, go through the instructions, have a bit of a read. That's how I knew that where the chain, where the anchor goes onto the front roller, it's got to line up with that cog, okay? The, the Basically the drive wheel that goes on. Now with Mueller's, that I imagine most winches do have, um, they come out with a template, which is very handy. So what I'm going to do actually now, they say photocopy it, but uh, I don't have a photocopier that big, uh, or scanner for that matter. Um, so I'm actually going to go get a pair of scissors, I'm actually just going to cut it all out, cut the outline out all the way around, and that way then I can literally lay it on top, and that's my template, perfect. And we'll uh, soon see whether my uh, pencil marks line up. So now I've got my uh, template cut out, the next step is to drill these holes. And it's actually written on here, uh, 10 millimeter holes. So that's basically, right here, that's exactly what's going to get, this is what's going to hold the actual winch down. And you also have other holes here that we have to drill, so that'll be a 16 mil. Um, and we've got to drill four holes in here, uh, and I've actually got to cut that piece out, which I'll cut that out with a jigsaw. So that should be pretty simple. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do four small pilot holes. So, I'm going to say, never works. Okay, so now I've got my my holes cut, and they asked me to do four holes. Here, the reason being is I've got to cut this bit out, and um, as you know, it's probably going to be a bit hard to get the jigsaw around that, but I've also marked now with a pencil. And now we can start having a go at cutting it up. Okay, so now that I've got all this holes are drilled through, so I've gone and worked with my template. Um, just going to put a center mark here 
I actually don't have a centre of hole, but I'm thinking that that's basically just for the, the wires for the electric winch to go through. Because um, we're facing forward, um, so that's where that'll go. So I'm just going to do a little dot there. Once again, do a pilot hole, get my 16mm drill and zip straight through. I'm not, I will be sealing these up with silicon, some sort of you know, silicon. Um, I'm not too concerned about water going through this hatch as such because remembering on, a, on the max um, this is, will actually go into my uh, chain locker um, and obviously the chain locker has a, um, a drain hole at the end of it sort of thing so obviously when you open this up any water that did get in it will actually drain out through the front of the boat anyway but I will seal these up as we go once we all bolt it on and, and uh, there you go. Alright, so the basic next step I'm going to be doing is basically I'm going to give this thing a dry run. Before I start sealing things up, fiberglassing, I'm going to be strengthening underneath with fiberglass. Um, I'm going to give her a bit of a dry run. So Muir's, they uh, supply these uh, studs, I suppose you call them. So I'm going to screw each one in. And um, I'm going to put it down on the deck, see how it fits and um, just make sure everything, before I get too carried away with pulling out fiberglass and you know sealing things off, there's no point until you make sure it, everything's aligned properly and that. It should be pretty close, because I did go pretty spot on with it. So, but with drill holes, sometimes, sometimes, you never can tell, so we're going to work it, put them in, there we go. So I'm just putting these in hand tight at the moment. Alright, so I'm going to flip this around. Okay, so what I'm doing now is originally some of you probably would have picked up on when I said uh, I was going to cut across here. I was actually going to make a basically the back half of this hatch open up. But what I've been thinking about is similar to when we did the cupboards, um, where I, d I try not to cut out anything that I don't have to. Because every little corner, same as when your car, um, if you've got when you've got folds in your car and your panel work and everything, um, that creates strength. That's, if you can imagine a flat bit of metal just wobbling in the breeze, if you get a machine shop to actually put a bend in it, all of a sudden that becomes quite rigid. And it's the same thing with all these fiberglass panels and that. So all of these panels become strengthening, every corner. Uh, they're not just in there for accident and, and, and that sort of stuff. So I'm actually going to leave this as one piece. So the next step for me to do is I'm going to get sandpaper, the fun job again, sanding, and I'm actually going to sand the living bejesus out of all of these holes here. I'm going to reinforce everything um, with fiberglass. And all I'm going to do is just basically layer, another layer, probably an inch strip first, make that a little bit wider and keep going. But first what we've got to do is just get really rough sandpaper, don't go for the fine stuff again. Get something that's going to really get down, get past if there is any paint on it or grime or whatever. And just really sand it away. It won't take long. Um, have a beer, or bourbon in my case. Um, and, um, what I'm going to also do is all the hinge points, because there's two hinges on this side on the max. Um, and then you've got your little clasp on, the, on this side which latches over. I'm going to also at the back here um, add extra uh, clamp downs and that's going to that's hold that in very strongly because it's when the winch is operating let me show you when the winch is operating it's not pulling up it's not going to pull your hatch up okay it's actually 
all of them, all the pull is coming from forward. Okay, so the idea is, is at the back here, I haven't worked out exactly yet, but you'll see. Um, I'm going to have two latches that'll go back onto basically the cabin area there. Um, something pretty substantial, just two, you know, stainless, that sort of setup, so it doesn't rust, um, and away we go. But back to this step. Let's start sanding. We'll get it done, eh? Okay, so now I've, I've sanded everything. You can see, you can see the different. Hopefully, it picks up on the video there. The different coloration. So I've sanded all the surrounds. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my vacuum cleaner, which I uh, bought for the boat actually, handy as. Um, get a vacuum it. Then I'm going to clean it up. So we'll just one step at a time. So, so before fiberglassing, reinforcing all these areas, I'm actually going to clean it up with a bit of a spray here. So I'm going to use two cloths. One where I'm wiping it on and uh, cleaning the surfaces, um, and then a uh, second cloth here. I'm going to uh, just dry it up, sort of thing. And that'll be in preparation fiberglassing. So. We don't want to get any dust in there, any dust and it won't stick and that will create like a little void in there, which uh, we don't want, we want strength here. So here we go. What I'm using is, uh, it's a brake and parts cleaner. Okay, so basically what does it say? It removes brake wear, deposits, acetone free, that's important, safe on rubber and plastic parts. So this should be fine for this. Um, gonna spray it on all around, way past everywhere that I'm gonna be using, okay? Heaps and heaps on there. Now, I'm gonna give it a bit of a rub over. Because I really want this as clean as humanly possible. Okay, so I've got um next stage here, so I've cleaned it all. Um, next sta stage is, I'll be cutting up. Um, basically, I'm just cutting up um, rectangles, sort of thing. And what I'm going to do, originally what, I, originally what I was going to do, was I was actually going to put a timber in here, okay, get longer bolts for the, uh, the uh, electric anchor winch to go through. Okay, and I was going to put timber in here, and then fiberglass it and everything like that. Now, when I went down to the shop, the fellow s said, I had two different ideas there. Okay, one was to fiberglass mat, go, you know, centimetre, two centimetres wider, fiberglass over it again, fiberglass over it again. And that's actually what the fellow suggested doing for me to do. Um, rather than putting timber in there, once again, timber in a boat, you know, try not to do it where there's going to be wet or water can get through or possibly get through um, he said some people use metal um, but it's going to create it's just going to create another part that can have movement or you can get air bubbles in there if you don't do it correctly this is probably the far simpler so I'm just literally going to layer it up layer it up uh, put one layer on you know cut all these pieces out let it harden properly give it a rough sandpaper back and then I'm going to do another layer, which is actually going to be just a little bit wider on each side. Next one, next one, next one. Probably three or four, I reckon. And then after after that, I'm going to see what it looks like. Um, and because I'm doing it underneath, I can these holes will still be here. So I'll be able to just basically just nice and gently just drill straight through sort of thing. As you can see, rubber gloves, safety first. Be a new one for me. Um, I've gone down and actually... Uh, same place, bought a roller, one of these little rollers. Um, that way then you, I can rub it in and work it all in. Get the, make sure there's no air bubbles in there, you know. Roll it this way, roll it that way. Um, some people use foam rollers, but there's always a chance that you're going to get little particles of the foam um, coming off into your fiberglass, and you don't want that. So this is metal. So And this is, you know, what is it? I think it cost me five dollars this tool. So, and that's probably on the high side. Um, so that's going to be with me forever, as long as I clean it. That'll be the important thing, cleaning it. So, yeah. 
Alright, we'll get started. Okay, so what I've done is basically I've pre cut everything, okay? So this little piece here, as I said, as I put each layer on, I'm going to go bigger and bigger and wider, okay? So that one's there, that's for uh, the hinges, that's on, you know, that when it folds up sort of thing. Because the way I'm designing this, these are the parts that are actually going to be holding it in. Um, these are my two strips here, this is what I'm starting off with. Nice and easy, just fiberglass matting. Whacking them in there, those two, that. And um, this one over here, I don't know whether you can see this one here. But, um, but yeah, that one's for, uh, you know, the latch that basically we hold down our, our hatch with. So, but I'm still doing that because each point's going to be a bracing point. So, I want to make this as strong as humanly possible. Okay, alright, I'll mix some, uh, some resin up. And away we go and point out that with the McGregors, um, they tend to be a polyester boat um, rather than fiberglass as such. So I'm using a polyester resin. Um, polyester resin, a little bit of hardener, and um, mixing it up in uh, one of my wife's containers, no doubt. <laughs> um, mix it up. Um, only mix up, obviously, just enough so you can use it, get it to dry, happy days, and let it dry. Like, let it go overnight. Let it go for 24 hours, you know. Um, the stronger the better. It's no point going, yep, put a layer of fiberglass on, two hours later, yep, I want to put another one on, another one. Let's make sure this stuff is dry, rock hard. It'll be depending on the weather. We've got a little bit of rain out this way today, um, so it's going to take, not ideal, but um, I think it's probably better than being too hot, to be honest. Um, just going to let it dry, and I'll just keep touching it every now and again, and yeah, see where it takes us. It doesn't really matter if it gets in the holes, eh? Let's see, we're going to drill them out anyway. Okay, so apply a little bit to the bottom. You can see when it's all soaked through. Just using a bit of paper just to spread it over it. So I don't have a spatula handy. I didn't put that many drops in, but I can already see the fiberglass working. This is a little bit of a difficult one, this one, to get into for that roller. So once again, I'm just using a bit of paper. Whatever works, as long as it soaks it up, though. Buy rocks. You should probably have a face mask on this stuff, but in my argument, I am outside, like not in the shed or anything. Um, so very well uh, ventilated area. Okay. But I'd say it would be good practice to probably um, put a you know, those, uh, disposable face mask things, you know. Should be 
happy campers. Now I obviously mixed too much. I should have probably mixed way less. Next time I'll know. Um, so you saw how much I put in, so for that amount, you could easily go, you know, probably just that much, just a little bit in the bottom. I just didn't want to run out midway through and um, have to re redo it all. Yeah. Okay, so that's about 20 minutes later. Um, I'll just show you. You can see it's already starting to thicken up. So I reckon I didn't do too bad just doing it off eye, to be honest. Um, because it is already starting to get solidifying, basically, or curing. You can just see it there. And this is a very cool day. Like, it's very overcast. We're probably around about the 17, 18 degree mark, I'd say. So you can see that. So I've actually got that pretty good, I reckon. So I reckon another hour or so, that will be set. But I'm gonna, as I said, I'm gonna let it set rock hard or close to it before I even start or attempt to sand it. That's good. So after um, sealing it all off, it's all beautifully sealed in there. What I've done now is, because what I've got to do is through the bottom of the anchor well, because I've got to, you've got to allow about 300 mil from the top of where the chain sits in the anchor locker. Uh, you've got to actually allow 300 mil, basically one foot above that from where the very, very top of it sort of sits. So what I've got to do now is I've actually got to cut a hole in the bottom of the anchor locker here so I can just continue the chain all the way down it's going to have plenty of fall and it's going to fall away into the um, into the storage area and under the v-berth and so how I found the center because I'm going to be putting a cutting a pipe down there I just got this bit of sinker here um, put a bit, little bit of my kids yellow paint on and I've just gone nice and gently through the hole and um, I've made a little nice little yellow dot mark there get rid of that and the pipe I'm going to be running through, because obviously kids and everything like that, this is just basically 90 mil uh, storm water, or you know what we have down pipes in Australia here. Um, just 90 mil, and that way then that will continue underneath here, all the way through the V berth, and the kids won't be um, won't get near it at all. So let's see here, I'll just show you what I've done. Get this up easy enough. Alright, so you can see my yellow dot there. I reckon that's pretty smart because uh, you couldn't get a plumb bob in here without putting a dot on it. And I didn't have a plumb bob, so what do we have? We have a sinker. So I've just outlined around that, and I'm going to get the, the jigsaw or um, if you've got a hole saw with that size, um, perfect. I'm going to cut a hole through that, and um, that will give us uh, plenty of um, space underneath. Should have clean this, I suppose. Okay, so this is the outside shot. Um, just going to be sticking the pipe through there. All the way through. Run the pipe through. Uh, you can see the the top hole there. And what I did was cut the the two holes in through there. Um, I ran the pipe through. Just did a like a circle mark around it, uh, and then cut it out with a jigsaw. I'll be five. It is a little bit scrappy to cut, just because it's very hard to get in there. I only had a jigsaw, um, but I'll be fiberglassing around that to seal that up as well. And so from there on, she will go into the hull, and I'll be lining that. So she should do very, very nicely. You can see all in there. Very dirty. Definitely be cleaning her out first. But that's 
that's what she looks like. Okay, now that the holes are cut, um, I've got my length of pipe. I've already actually cut it to length, so I've stuck it all the way through. That's uh, where the anchor locker, the bottom of it is, so I know how far to put it down. And you probably notice I'm going to have this up a fair bit there. Now I'm going to glass it in. I'm going to glass it in, glass it in through here, and away we go. The sun goes down, another magic day. Um, what I'm done here is I've basically, this is a 20mm PVC pipe. I'm going to run this straight down through my 90mm down pipe. Um, all the way down, that's just going to stick up there. And that's going to be for my electrical, like, you know, uh, positive and negative. So I can run that all the way down. I'm just going to attach that to the plastic pipe using clamps. So one hole all the way through with the 90mm. Throw this down the middle. Attach it on, and I'll show you that. Um, and away we go. I think that's pretty cool. That way, then it'll keep all the wires all protected, um, hopefully, out of the water, everything like that. More importantly, uh, when the chain goes down, it won't be rubbing on the power cables. I didn't want to make another hole. Um, as you'll probably know now, I don't like to make holes in the boat where I don't have to. It kills me that I had to do a 90 mil hole. But, um, but yeah, this is what this is the idea. Um, it's your work. Here's the top view. So I just used a couple um, shackles there, uh, U-shaped shackles, I suppose you call them, just around the pipe. Drilled a couple holes straight through there, and looking pretty slicker. No more holes cut in the boat. Just straight through the pipe where the chain goes down. Right down into the energy pump. That's pretty cool. Right down there. Okay, just a quick look here. Uh, I've put my orange pot. That's where my power is going to run through. Then I'm going to run it behind me here and um, connect it up to all the isolators and the batteries and stuff like that. Hope you've enjoyed this video. You can see where it goes up on the inside of the pot. It's all nicely fiberglassed up there. And then goes up through into the, the anchor well there. I'll show you the top here in a second. Okay, so just a quick run through. I've just um, soldered up the two wires there and I've ran the cabling through. Um, I've put conduit around it, um, just flexible stuff you get from any of your auto places. Um, just to keep the, uh, keep the wires, you know, from being bare and, and just sitting there sort of thing. And if there's any moisture in there, it should keep a little bit out. A uh, good point to note is with the, because uh, there's a, a split that goes all the way through the middle of it. Um, that's how you put the wire on. Um, I try and leave that to the bottom. So if any water does get in there, um, it, at least it'll have a chance to get out. You know, there shouldn't be anything really coming through. But, um, but yeah. And so when I close this one up, you can see, there'll be a bow down. So any water that gets in there, like say when we're travelling along, um, with the bow in the, in the cable there, it'll hit down. Um, the water will go to the to the bottom of the loop uh, and drip down and run out our um, our drain hole with any luck. Okay, I'd just like to thank everyone for tuning in again, watching our video of how to install an electric anchor winch. Uh, we didn't go, I didn't go into too much detail with uh, wiring up and that. That's something I think you've got to have a look at the diagram. And if you do get a slightly different winch, it's, it'll could fair chance it'll be a, a different wiring diagram. So that did take me a whole day just to do the wiring, being a knob. So we were actually out, uh, we went out this weekend. Unfortunately, I didn't get any video footage of um, the anchor going up and down and, and so forth like that. But um, cause we had quite a hectic weekend with the weather. Um, so our first night out, we had gusts of in excess of about 30 odd kilometers per hour. Um, and when I put the anchor down, she held beautifully. Uh, we anchored in mud, so the anchor came up full of mud. Um, and we, we didn't move. Uh, important thing is with most anchor winches, is what we do is we put a, what they, I think they call a, a snubber rope. 
Okay, so you have that where you basically tie your boat off onto the pontoon and so forth up the front. Um, I have, uh, I used, what was that, I think about 7 mil or 6 mil nylon rope coming down because the nylon would give it stretch. Um, and then I attach that to the chain further down. Um, I let the anchor chain off from the anchor winch, let, let it off, let the chain have a little bit of a loop like that. Um, and that gets the, uh, the, the pull directly off the anchor itself sort of thing. Um, and diverts it and having having the you know nylon rope thinner rope gives it a little bit of a stretch so every time when the wind changed direction because it was changing a lot on us we didn't feel that bang of what a chain will give you so hopefully that's to help you out good luck okay so i'd just like to do a big shout out at, at the end of this um just to um, a fellow mac owner um warwick finlay uh he's up at manly there now he was gave us the opportunity to go up and have a look at his Mac. He has the exact same um, anchor winch on the what I do, um, and so that gave me a good look at to what I can see, what I can do, possibly change things, you know, um, and that helped me out a lot. That was a massive help, and I do appreciate it. Um, so hopefully this helped you out. Um, that's what it's all about. You may not use all the ideas that I have but um, it's one step in a process to, to help you out. I did a lot of phone calls, a lot of running around, and uh, yeah, with any luck, this will take a little bit of the time of, of that out of it for you. A um, lot, of, lot of running around. And don't forget, if you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to put something down in the comments. Um, ask a question, and I'll get back to you. As, uh, I do check it quite often sort of thing. So within normally 24 to 48 hours, I will definitely get back to you with an answer. And um, don't forget to share, like this page, um, by all means comment, um, and become a subscriber so you can follow our journey. Um, if you're only just tuning in on this one, go back to our very first episode. Um, that way then you can follow our progress. And our first episode was us, us actually looking for a boat, a trailer sailor. Um, so you can follow our journey all the way through but don't forget guys hit that like button share it definitely subscribe we need you to subscribe to um to keep this channel going we really do no, but thank you very much have a great day